it's Pete here and today I want to give you one of my best tips for locating the missing cards and improving your card reading skills. And this is how I approach determining what sort of length the opponents or partner is leading from and who actually has the missing honors in the suit. So today what we're going to do is have a look at lead agreements and I want you to understand how you and your partner would lead and I'm also going to talk about how the robots actually lead and what they'll lead from certain holdings. And I want to go into a bit of depth with this because it's really, really helpful for working out where the missing cards are. So the strategy that I go through is we'll look at the lead agreements and work out what they will lead from different holdings. And then we'll look at some example hands and see if we can piece together what possibilities there actually are. And I'm going to hone in what are the critical things to actually look at. So let's jump in and first have a look at um, the lead agreements of the robots. And I also want you to discuss with your partner, what would you do? So what would you lead from two, three or four or five cards uh, with or without an honor? So let's look at uh, some examples here. So let's say we're leading from a double turn. We've got the eight of hearts and the six of hearts. Which one do you actually lead from this? So the general rule is you lead top of a double turn. And what I've got here is I've highlighted in red what card the robots actually leave from this holding. So I'm just going to go through and talk about the different uh, leads that they'll do. And yeah, so if they've got two, they will lead the top of a double turn. So nice and easy there. What about when you've got three cards? So the eight, the six, and the four, which card would you lead from? And this is an area where there's lots of different possibilities. There's no one consensus. Different partnerships have different agreements and that's okay. You wanna make sure you and your partner are on the same wavelength, but also it's important to understand what your opponent's lead agreements are when you're playing them. So this is why there's convention cards that you can look this up, um, but also with the robots, you just wanna have a vague idea of what they do. And the robots will lead low from a three card suit. So they'll lead the four in this spot. What about when you've got four cards? What do you lead from that? Um, and does it change whether you have an honor or not? So if you swapped in that eight to be a queen, would that change what you actually lead? So work out what you would actually lead uh, now and make sure your partner's on the same wavelength of this one. This is a pretty important one. Um, and Basically, what, do you, what order do you play it? Not only what your first card is, but what would be your second card? And also doing that from the three small. So here the robots actually will lead their fourth best. So if I've got four low cards, they will lead the three in this spot. And from five cards, they will also lead the three. So the robots will lead fourth best and it has no relevance whether they have an honor or not. So let's have a look at what this actually is. The robots don't actually care if there's an honor. They will lead the same card from two, three, four, or five, whether they have an honor or not. So from uh, two, they lead the top one. From three, they lead their lowest. From four, they lead their lowest. From five, they will lead their fourth best. So this is where it's really interesting. The key things that you actually want to look for here. So when they've got uh, these holdings, um, what I like to look for are what cards are lower than the ones they actually led. So if I'm trying to work out if someone's led a fourth best or from a five card suit, if they're leading from a five card suit, there will always be this one card that is lower than the card they actually led. So if either dummy or I had the two and the opponents led the three, then I would know that it couldn't be a five card suit. Because whenever they lead a three, if it was from a five card suit, there would always be that card below it. So if they had five, there has to be this card below the one they led. And if I can see all of the missing cards below the one they led, it can't be a five card suit anymore. And then I would know it's either their lowest from three or four or a singleton. So if you're trying to work out, do they have four or five? The really key thing that you want to pay attention to, is there a card below? So usually I look to see which of dummy and my cards are lower than the one they led. And then also keep an eye out for what the other opponent plays and really remember what was the specific card that was led and have I seen any of the lower ones? Cause that'll clarify uh, what sort of length they have. The other important thing that I like to pay attention to is also the other time that they might have a lower card, which is when they've led from two. 
And if you remember what card they, they lead and they follow up with a lower one, that means that they've either led from two or they've led from five. These are the two possibilities that they actually have a lower card than them. So the opponents might lead a five and then you see them follow up with the four. And at that stage, on the second trick, when you've seen them play the four, you can now rule out that the suit, that they have three in the suit or four in the suit, because there would be no way they actually have that lower card. The only two holdings that they might have a lower card on are when they've led from two or five. And usually the bidding and the play will give a pretty good idea of that three card discrep discrepancy, whether they actually have two or five. So again, the key things that I like to look for here, Firstly, what about the cards lower than the one they actually led? So it's really important to know, uh, remind yourself what specific card was led. Look for the missing ones lower than it. And if at the second round they play a card that is lower, you straight away know they've led from two or five and can rule out those other possibilities. Okay. Um, the robots also lead the same exact card if they have an honor. So what this looks like is if we swapped out the, the eight for the queen, uh, queen doubleton, they'll lead top from a doubleton. So if you ever see an honor, it's possibly a doubleton or top of a sequence, and we'll get to that later. From three or four, they'll lead uh, their low card, and from a five card suit, again, they'll lead their fourth best, and that will leave one card below what they led. If you're trying to determine what sort of honors someone might have led from. What's really important here is you wanna look at the cards higher than the one they led from. So uh, let's say that uh, they led the four and I'm trying to work out have they led away from the queen or not? Who actually has the queen? So what I would look for is can they possibly have this missing card there or missing two cards between that suit? And if they can't, then they don't actually have this. Now with a four or a three, it's very likely that that's the case, um, that they could have a missing card. It gets a bit more gray when they've got like a seven or an eight. Like if the, they led an eight, it would usually look like they're leading high, but maybe the missing cards are queen, 10, eight, in which case there is that possibility that they've got that missing higher card. So this is one of the spots people use the rule of 11, which is a way of helping you work out how many missing cards the other hand has, not the person who led, higher than the one that was led. And I think it goes into a lot of detail and isn't that much simpler than just looking for what those higher cards actually are. So usually what I do, instead of using the rule of 11, which I'm not going to go into detail here about, when someone leads, I think that if they have led low from an honor, if they've led from a four card suit, uh, there will be three cards higher than what they've led. Even from a, a four card suit, there'll be three cards higher than what they've led. And any of the remainder you can deposit in the other hand. If they've led from a three card suit, there'll only be two. And it's not always clear if they've led three or four, you sometimes just have to guess what they have done there. Um, but again, if you're trying to work out where the missing honors are, the key points to look for are what are the cards higher and can they have that card in between? So for instance, if we went back to that uh, proposition that they've led an eight, could they have the queen when the missing cards are queen, 10, eight? The answer is yes. But if there was no card between the eight and the queen that was missing, or let's say we saw their partner play the 10, then I would know that they couldn't have the queen because if the missing cards were queen and eight and uh, there was no card in between that they could have, when they've only got two, they're going to lead the highest one. Otherwise there has to be these cards in between. So that's what I look for, for when trying to find the honor. So again, if you wanna determine length, you go for the cards that are below it. How many cards are below? You can't really distinguish between three and four easily because they lead their lowest card. Um, but from a five card suit, there will be a card lower. From a two card suit, there will be a card lower. And they'll always play that lower one. Well, the robots don't always play the lower one next, but if you see the lower one played on the next round, then you know that it's not from three or four. You can rule out these two, and you know that they've either got two or five. 
So then just looking at sequences, the robots lead top of sequences, except ace king, they tend to lead king from ace king. Uh, so here, the one exception is if they've got ace king doubleton, so if they've got no extra cards, they'll actually lead the ace from ace king there, they'll play the ace, then the king, and then switch. So if you ever see them play the ace, then the king, this is unusual for them. And that means that they've got precisely two of the suit. And you can tell that they've got a doubleton and then just switch away from it. If they've got like ace king third or fourth or fifth, if they're going to lead it, they lead the king. They also lead the uh, king from king queen jack. So they lead top of the sequence there. And um, they can also lead top of an interior sequence. So queen 10, nine, they can lead the 10 there. Uh, they also can lead 10 from like just 10, 9, 8. Um, sequences stop at 10 though. So if you gave them 8, 7, 6, they would lead the 6. I don't think they lead the 8 from that. So um, yeah, sequences stop at 10. Um, they lead king from ace king usually. They'll lead ace from ace king doubleton. They'll lead top of sequences. So they're the key things that you actually need to know. Um, so again, if you want to work out length, you look for the cards below. If you want to work out honors, you look for the cards above, but it's really important to remember the precise card that actually got led. So let's jump in and look at some examples here. So here we've got a 20 count, so I'll open two no trumps and we get the five of hearts lead. Okay, so what can we work out? We look for the cards below the five. So there's the four, three, and two. We can see two of those. We can see the four and the three, but we can't actually see the two of hearts. So straight away, we can't rule out too much at the moment. They could be leading from two. It could be five, two, doubleton. They could be leading from three with it being queen, uh, anything to the five or four card suits to the five, or it could have a five card suit. But what I really care about is paying attention to that missing two. So here we'll play low. We see the queen. This hasn't given away too much here. Um, I do know that this is no longer a five card suit, I think, because the robots probably would lead jack from jack 10, eight, fifth. But uh, that's just looking at the missing cards. We're missing queen, jack, 10, eight, five, two and just trying to work out what they would lead from different holdings. So we'll, I, I wouldn't play this way, but all we're working out is what's going on in the heart. So I'll just continue hearts and we'll see what happens here. See a higher card and we still haven't seen the two. Okay, so straight away, uh, this suit looks like it's breaking three, three. Okay, so the opponents, and let's work out how we can go back. So working this out again. Uh, here we're missing queen, jack, 10, eight, five, two. Okay. First thing that I look at is who has the two? Have they led their lowest card or not? So from a five card suit, they'll always have one lower. From a two card suit, they'll always have one lower. Three or four, they uh, have led their lowest card. So is this five the lowest card is the question that's running through my head. And I go, well, where is the two? I don't actually know that straight away. So here, the first thing I look for is does East have the two? And the answer is, I don't know. Okay, so we win the king here and I'll play the ace and we see the 10. So we still haven't seen the two, but the opponents had six hearts. So if West had five of them, then East would only have one and would have a 5-1 distribution, and I would see East show out now. If the, the hearts were 4-2, um, uh, and West led from a four card suit, that would mean that they can't have that missing two because they can't have a lower card, and East would have the two, and I would see that now. If uh, West had led from a two card suit, they ha would have had the five and the two, and I would have seen that too. So here we play that. I haven't seen the two yet. And I also know West doesn't have five cards and doesn't have two because they can't, if they had five cards, East would show out. If West had two, they wouldn't have led the five and then play the 10. So straight away, we know East has the two of hearts and West has one other. So we'll play that. And this is how we can actually determine it. 
Sometimes you can get it straight away at trick one. Sometimes you can get it the second round you actually play the suit. So let's look at another example of this. Uh, so here we've got 15 points. So I'll open one no trump and we get to three no trump. We get the four of hearts lead. So um, again, I want to work out what do I know about the length of the suit. So here, this could be a, a singleton. It could be from two. They could have the four and the three. That's the only other missing card below the four because I have the two. After that, they could have uh, three cards and this be their lowest card or four cards and this could be their lowest card or it could be five cards and they could have the three as well. So it's really who's got the three. I can't rule it out straight away, but we'll see what happens here. So win and I'll just play a spade. So who has the three? Uh, they're going to let me make this contract, but um, uh, I have the rest of the tricks at this stage, but let's focus on uh, working out this heart suit. So we play another heart and we haven't seen the three yet. Okay, so I had two hearts here and I had three there. The opponents had eight. So there are, um, that could be five and three, six and two, um, four and four but first of all the first thing we get to rule out they don't actually have two they would have followed with that lower heart there so put in the king and we see the three here okay good news we now know the length of the suit so here we've seen that east has the three so we can rule out west actually having a five card suit so west can't have five um, so west either has three and the heart suit is three and five, or it's four and four. So again, I could have just cashed out my winners, but I just wanted to uh, focus on that. And the suit breaks four, four. So I'll claim the uh, rest of the tricks. And let's just look at uh, this whole hand. Here, you can see that the suit's four, four. Again, really important thing to do. Look for the card that is lower than what they've uh, led. And that'll help you work out what length they have. We'll do one more example. Um, here I have a one diamond opening, do I? Yes. Two diamonds, I'll just bid uh, two no trumps. That's where we play. Okay, uh, we got the two of clubs lead. So straight away, I can say there's nothing lower than the two. I know this isn't a five card suit. I know this isn't a doubleton. So this is one, three, or four. Um, and we've got uh, six clubs, so the opponents have seven. Um, I also knew that uh, they don't have the ace-king most likely, because they might have led ace-king fourth. I've shifted to a spade and another club. Okay. And my guess is west has four clubs here. I think east might have continued them. Um, but. Uh, we don't have the rest of the tricks, but I'll just claim anyway. Um, let's look at the, the whole hand here. So here, west had four low, east had three. Um, so again, this is how you can determine length, and it is super relevant for being able to play the hand, and a really fantastic tip for just piecing together the missing cards. It's something that you want to work on. Build that habit of looking at what other cards below the one they led, um, understanding their lead agreements, the robots, um, or whether you're playing against human players, what they lead from three low or four low, or what do they lead if they have an honor? Does it actually change? This is where system cards are really useful. So have a look at that and start building information about the opening uh, suit. Anyway, thanks all for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.